Hi, welcome to this page of the notes. Now this is going to be a word problem where we start getting into formulas. What we just did on the previous pages in the notes was the first objective, which is using the order of operations to evaluate expressions. And hopefully you're very comfortable doing that now after your review of the order of operations uh, and how we use it to uh, evaluate expressions. But what we want to do now is take a look at our second objective, which is using formulas. Now I told you the way these are generally going to work is the formula uh, is going to be associated with some sort of word problem. You'll have to pull the information out of the word problem, plug it into the formula, and solve for the unknown. So let's take a look and see how this one goes. I actually spent quite a bit of time, uh, about seven years actually, in living in Indiana. And during the time I was in Indiana, we actually had a number of tornadoes come through. In fact, one of them came right through the town where my wife and I were living at the time. I happened to be, while they were hunkered down in the basement, um, I went outside. I wouldn't suggest doing it, but I did. Uh, and I did, I saw the tornado. It was about a mile and a half away or so. Went right across the outside of the town um, and you could see the funnel cloud and everything and all the debris that it was picking up. It was really, really a neat experience. Fortunately, nobody was injured, otherwise it wouldn't have been quite so interesting experience. But what we're gonna do in this problem is we're gonna go ahead and try to approximate the volume of the funnel cloud on a tornado. And here's how we're gonna do it. Let me highlight some things for you. They ask you to uh, approximate, there it is, approximate the volume of a tornado. We're going to approximate the volume of a tornado. What that means is using the formula that you're given, which is from geometry, that is the volume of a cone. You don't need to memorize it. If I want you to use it, I will give you the formulas. This isn't a geometry class, but we are going to be solving for V since they ask you to find the volume of the tornado or the cone uh, represented by the tornado. We're going to pull the rest of the information out of here, and here's what we see. Uh, let's do this guy right here. I have 75 meters, and that 75 meters happens to be, in this case, the radius. So I know that R is going to be 75 meters. I also see here that 25 meters turns out to be the height. Now that I've identified all of the information in the problem, let's go ahead and plug it into our formula, and then we'll use the order of operations to evaluate the formula. Here we go, the volume is equal to one-third pi. Uh, remember, pi is not a variable. Pi is a number, pi is a number. We just use the Greek letter um, to represent this number pi. You should be very, very familiar with pi at this point. Um, you can use 3.14, your calculator, Calculator also has a pi button on it. I'll show you where that's at in just a second. Uh, not entirely sure how your teacher or tutor uh, might want you to use pi. I'm going to leave all of my answers in terms of pi. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's keep going here. R, we said was 75 meters. Do not forget your units. When it comes to other sciences like biology, chemistry, and physics, when you're doing math in those classes, your answers only have meaning because of the units, right? A number in chemistry means nothing unless it has units with it. If you tell me it's liters, I know that we're talking about a volume. If you tell me it's grams, I know that we're talking about a mass, right? Uh, in physics, right, if you tell me that it's meters per second or kilometers per hour, right, or joules, I know we're talking about energy. Units are very, very important. Please do not forget your units. I now know the height. Pull that right out of my problem, 225, and again, that is meters. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the order of operations to begin to evaluate this formula. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of the exponent. Uh, I plugged it into my calculator. I did 75 meters squared and you should come up with 5,625 meters squared. Remember you square everything inside the parentheses. The 75 gets squared and the meters gets squared as well. So again, we said it was 5,625 meters squared times 225 meters. Now, the next part of the order of operations is to go ahead and do multiplication and division from left to right. 
I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I think you'll be okay with it. I'm actually gonna multiply these guys together first. Then I'm gonna come back and take care of the one third. I hope that doesn't throw you off too much. But when I multiply 5,625 times 225, I get 1,265,625. Double check that on your calculator. Make sure I did it right. 1,265,625. And then, of course, your units. We are multiplying m squared times m. Anytime you have like bases, m and m, you add the exponents. 2 plus 1 means I have meters cubed. And those of you who are in geometry, that should make perfect sense. Hopefully that brings back right. When we're dealing with a volume, you have both a length, a width, and a height, right? You have three dimensions, so my dimensions should be cubed. Now, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead then and multiply by my one-third. It's actually dividing by three. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let me get my marker back here. V is equal to, uh, let's see here, when I divide by 3, I get 421,875. Don't forget your pi, and that's going to be meters cubed. Now, here's the reason I leave my answers in terms of pi, simply meaning that pi is in my answer. The reason I'm going to leave pi in my answer is because pi is an irrational number. It is a non-repeating decimal. And if I were to plug 3.14 in, I no longer would have an equal sign. It would actually be an approximation, right? Because pi is an infinite number, and I can't spend the rest of my life plugging pi into my calculator to get an exact answer. I'm going to approximate it. I'm going to round it off at 3.14. I think your calculator goes out to about eight or nine decimal places. Still, it's an approximation. I prefer not to approximate things if I don't have to. So I'm going to leave my answer in terms of pi. I know that my volume is equal to exactly this number, whatever it is. Now, if you have a teacher or a tutor or a professor who wants you to go ahead and use pi, uh, remember pi is on your calculator. I'll see if I can show it to you where it is. Right over here where your power button is, right underneath your directional arrow pad, you're going to go ahead and hit the second blue button, second blue button, which is right up here. Go ahead and hit that power button. It'll put pi on your calculator, uh, and then you don't have to do the 3.14 thing. If you were to go ahead and multiply this number, 421,875 by pi, I get this, the volume. Don't forget the approximate. You are no longer equal. You are approximating. I get 1,325,359.4 meters cubed. Again, if you are with me, taking the class with me, we're going to leave our answers in terms of pi. Uh, if you are taking this course somewhere else or you are uh, uh, working with someone who would prefer you, to go ahead and multiply by pi, then you're going to go all the way down to here. That goes ahead and takes care of the problem on this page of the notes. Head on over to the next page. I'll meet you there.